In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new product from Ubiquiti that literally just launched today. And it's the Unify Dream Machine Pro Max. So yep, this is a brand new product that Ubiquiti have just released and they've sent this over as a pre-release sample for me to check out. So what we'll do in this video is we'll take a very quick look at it, try it out, talk about some of the new features and do some initial performance tests. And then when it comes to some of the more in-depth features I want to go into, I'll do separate videos covering those in full detail. Now, if you look at the front of the box, you'll see what looks like a regular Unify Dream Machine with a couple of slight subtle changes. Because what this is, is essentially an upgraded version of the regular Unified Dream Machine Pro with some of the features from the Unified Dream Machine Pro SE and a few additional new features and more powerful processor. So it looks like quite an interesting option for either people who just want a bit more functionality or for higher end networks that require additional performance. So that's enough time looking at the box. Let's take a look at what we get. So let's open this up. And yet, for the avoidance of doubt, Unify has sent me this over free of charge for review as an early review sample so I could take a look at it before it initially released to, the, released to the market. However, they haven't told me anything to say and I'll be giving my full opinion of this product. So yep, let's take a look at it. So if you open the box up here, very quick unboxing, it's very similar to most other UDMs. You get a box of accessories here. So if we quickly take a look inside here, what you're going to get is a power cable. I've got a European power cable. I think that's just because it's a review sample. They quite often include a European or American power sample, power cable with the review samples, but you should hopefully get one for your country. And you also notice an interesting end on this connector because this is a locking power connector. So it now has a locking power connector, so we'll take a look at that in a minute. Then here you also get a box of accessories. It's the same sort of thing you get with other UDMs. What you'll get is a bunch of screws for the rack ears and also to mount the hard drives, some rubber feet if you want to stand on the table, and then some cage nuts. And then one quick note with these cage nuts, just for people in Europe or in countries that use a metric system, these cage nuts are imperial sized cage nuts and screws. So personally, I try not to use these because if you get these mixed in with a bunch of regular uh, metric cage nuts that you'll normally use, if these get mixed in, it, gets, it becomes a complete pain because you end up with cage nuts and screws that don't fit. So I tend to just keep these separate and just stick to using metric cage nuts. But it's nice to get them included. So yeah, that's all the sort of screws and accessories there. And you've got a couple of rack ears that you can mount on it. So we'll get these on later when we actually get it set up. But what we want to take a look at now is the UDM, not the boring accessories box. So let's get this out. So hopefully you can lift this out on camera without dropping it because it's very awkward on this table. There we go, get it up. And here we have the brand new UDM Pro Max. So let's get the box out of the way, get this thing unpacked, and then let's take a look at it. So just try and get out of the packaging. That's it there, get that out. And it's in a sort of bag here. Get this out, see what it's like. And there we go, we now have the brand new Unified Dream, Mach Dream Machine Pro Max. So what I'll do now is I'll go and get this out, get all these stickers taken off, get the rack ears put on, and we'll take a closer look at it. So now here we have the brand new Unified Dream Machine Pro Max. So let's talk about the changes between this and the regular UDM Pro. Well, the first change will be fairly obvious. With this one, you now have two 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive bays, whereas the previous device only had one. And what this allows you to do is have hard drives in RAID for Unify Protect. Now it only supports RAID 1, so you can only mirror your hard drives, you can't stripe to get additional capacity. But what it now means is that you can have Unify Protect redundant across two separate hard drives. So if one drive fails, you don't lose all your footage and your Unify Protect setup doesn't go down. And to be honest, it really isn't an issue that it's only RAID 1. Realistically, I would never recommend striping on, say, an NVR to get additional capacity. Just put bigger hard drives in. Or if you need a lot more capacity, buy a dedicated NVR. But what this now means is that if you just want to use Unify Protect on a UDM without having a separate NVR, you can now finally have RAID. And that's quite important, especially for certain situations, either for like legal reasons, compliance reasons, insurance reasons, you might need to have your CCTV footage particularly secure and not have it relying on a single hard drive where if that fails, you lose all your footage. Or even just as a personal thing, you might just want more redundant storage for your, for your CCTV rather than trusting a single hard drive. So with this, you can stick a pair of hard drives in there and I have full hard drive redundancy. Next up, let's talk about the ports. So if you look over here, it looks very similar to a regular UDM Pro. You have your eight gigabit switch ports here, and these, like before, are on a dedicated gigabit switch that's uplinked to the CPU over a gigabit connection. And this is something a lot of people got confused about, especially when the UDM came out, and I made a video trying to clarify this. People talk about these ports being limited by like a total switching capacity of gigabit and all this kind of stuff. Essentially what this is, is a gigabit switch. So all these ports can talk to each other at gigabit speeds all simultaneously and it's completely fine. But if any traffic on these needs to connect through the CPU, 
they're going to be limited by that one gigabit connection, which is absolutely fine. So you're going to use these for basic devices that you just want to plug into the UDM to get sort of an internet connection. And for that, it works absolutely fine. Now, unlike the UDM Pro SE, these aren't PoE ports, you don't have PoE on this. This is generally designed for higher end, larger deployments where, where you'd have dedicated separate PoE infrastructure. So if you're wanting that sort of all-in-one box that has built-in PoE, you're probably still better looking at the UDM Pro SE, but for larger deployments, you're going to have separate PoE switching, so you don't really need PoE in this. So these are just eight regular gigabit ports. Next over here, you have a WAN port, but unlike the UDM Pro, but like the UDM Pro SE, this is a 2.5 gigabit port. So on this, you now have 2.5 gigabit WAN connectivity, which is quite useful because a lot of ISPs are now starting to introduce two and a half gig connections. Sadly, not anywhere I live, but they're starting to bring it out in certain parts of the world. And those ONTs and modems generally require a two and a half gig ethernet port. So it's nice to have that there. Finally, you have your pair of regular 10 gig SFP plus ports, one for WAN, one for LAN, like you've had before. And what you can also do with these is remap them all. So all these WAN ports are remappable, like on other UDMs. So what you have is, as standard, you've got a two and a half gig WAN port, a 10 gig WAN port, and a 10 gig LAN port, and then these are all one gig LAN ports. But what you can do is port eight on this switch can be turned into a gigabit WAN port, and then you can reassign them. So for example, while you could have the sort of standard configuration, what you can instead do is you could set up port eight on this switch to be a gigabit WAN port, and then set the two and a half gig port to act as a LAN port. So if you had a relatively inexpensive 2.5 gig switch that was just a full 2.5 gig copper switch with no 10 gig uplinks, you could potentially remap this, remap this WAN port to be a LAN port and plug that into your 2.5 gig switch. So that's potentially an option. Likewise, if you've got no plans to have a 10 gig LAN, uh, WAN connection, which is very rare nowadays, what you could do is you could turn both of these SFP Plus ports into LAN ports and uplink these to switches. So it is really nice that they are remappable. But yep, in comparison to the normal UDM Pro, you now have a 2.5 gig WAN port like you did on the UDM Pro SE. Now while we're on the topic of ports, we'll take a very quick look, look around the back, but there's nothing that exciting or new. You've got this regular redundant power connection for connecting to the UDM RPS, Unify RPS. I'm not going to be using that here, but it is nice to have that if you want to have that. Essentially, it's a separate DC power supply that you can plug into all your Unify devices and feed that from a separate device. So if you've got a dual-fed dual rack fed from two separate sources, you can plug all your built-in PSUs into one feed, plug your RPS into other feeds, into the other feed, and have two feeds going into each device. So that's quite nice there. And finally, you've got your regular IEC power inlet. But you may notice this looks a little bit different to the regular UDM Pro. The port's a little bit re recessed, and there's this sort of switch here. And that's because this is a lockable connector. So now if you want to use a standard IEC power connector, it'll work absolutely fine. You can plug that in there just like that, and it'll work absolutely fine. But if you use the cable it comes with, so here we have the included IEC cable, and take a look at the end of that, you can see it looks a little bit different. It's a slightly flatter end and it's got this notch out the side. And that's because this works with that locking me mechanism. So if I plug that connector in there and then slide this lock along, that connector is now locked in place. So if I pull on it, that's not going to come out. And that is really useful. If you've got this in a rack with a bunch of equipment, it's nice to have some way to stop that being pulled out because it's so easy for an IEC connector to slowly work loose over time as you're working in the rack. And then you can sort of knock it and either completely knock it out and kill power to the device, or just jiggle it enough that it loses power and reboots. So having that locking connector is really nice. So yep, that's a nice little feature there. I think the SC might have it, and a few other Unify products are starting to introduce this, but it's definitely not universal across all the products yet. But it's nice to see that they're starting to roll out across the products, because it's a really nice little feature. But yep, that's a look at the sort of hardware and the changes that you can sort of see on the surface, and the ports and how all that works. But the other thing that you don't see with this is the improved specs under the hood. And essentially, the UDM Pro Max just has a nice spec bump over the regular UDM Pro. So whereas the UDM Pro and the UDM Pro SE have 4 gigs of RAM, this has 8 gigs, and this has a much more powerful processor. Looking at the high-level published specs, the UDM Pro and UDM Pro SE are rated for, I think, 3.5 gigabit of full IDS and IPS throughput. This, on the other hand, is rated up to 5 gigabit, so you get significantly better IDS and IPS throughput. But the other thing to bear in mind with this is that the UDM is not just a firewall. It also runs a bunch of other applications, Unify Protect, Unify Access, Unify Talk, all their new features they're bringing out, and all of that shares the same CPU. So if you're running Protect on a UDM and you're running Access on a UDM and a bunch of other applications, those are all sharing the exact same CPU that's also doing your firewalling, routing, IDS, IPS, all that sort of stuff. 
So even if you don't care about having the full 5 gigabit IDS IPS throughput, I personally have no use for that, the additional CPU power in this might be quite useful for larger deployments where you're running a lot of Unify applications on the UDM, just to get that additional CPU headroom. Likewise, the additional memory could also be very helpful for that, so yeah, that'll be really cool just to have that additional power there. But yeah, let's look at the hardware and talk about the specs. So what we'll now do is we'll get it fired up, we'll take a look at these redundant hard drives in action, and we'll do some performance tests to take their claims of 5 gigabit IDS and IPS throughput to the test. Okay, so now here are the UDM Pro Max set up. So what we've got here is we've got it connected up to my net main network over a 10 gigabit connection, so it's going in, the 10 gigabit WAN port is connected onto my main network, and then the laptop is just plugged into one of the gigabit ports, and we've pulled up the web interface for it. So before we get onto the performance tests, let's take a look at how these new hard drive bays work, and how we can set up RAID. So currently there's no hard drives in this, so if we go to storage in the web interface, it just says that there's no disks found, and actually shop HDDs, which takes you to the Unify store. But let's get some drives put in. So what we have here is we have a pair of hard drives, so I've got a pair of WD Purple. So these are WD Purple Pros, which are Western Digital's high-end drives designed for surveillance use. Of course, it'll work with any hard drives, but these are designed for CCTV use, and I've got a pair of these. So let's get these installed. Now, when it comes to installing the drives, the process is basically the same as any other UDM. There's just the same drive base, it's just, you've got two of them now. So we'll take the hard drive out. And it is a nice toolless mechanism, so we can take that out there, take the drive out. Like that. And then here are the bays. So pull that out there. There's the bay. And what's quite neat with this is that both of these bays has a, have a cooling fan. Now the cooling fans are very quiet, you barely hear them, but whereas on the normal UDM you have one, one fan cooling this hard drive, they have actually put a second fan in, so both hard drives are cooled, so that's quite nice. There's a little fan in the back of both these two hard drive bays. And then to install the drive, it's a completely toolless mechanism. You just line the pegs up on one side there, like that, and then just click it in on the other side, just like that. That drive's now ready to go in, so yep, that's installed. So now all we need to do is put the drive in the machine. So yep, with that first drive, let's get it installed. So we'll slide that into the machine there and see if it comes up on the screen. So we'll just set it up first of all with a single hard drive and then we'll add the second one in for a RAID configuration. So that drive's in there, we'll let that spin up and we'll take a look at what happens on the screen. So you can just hear that hard drive starting to spin up there. So I'll give it a couple of minutes, let it get ready and we'll come back when it's recognised in the software. And as you can see, the drive's now detected. So the drive's now detected in the software here, showing we've got eight terabytes of usable space. But as you can see, it says eight terabytes of usable storage no, no, zero bytes of storage protection, so it's not running in RAID, and as you see, it recommends adding additional drives for basic storage protection. So that would then allow you to add an extra drive and enable RAID 1. So yep, that's now working straight away with a single drive, just single drive, no redundancy. Let's try an additional drive. So all we'll do is we'll pop the other drive into the second hard drive bay, stick it in using the exact same tool-free mechanism as before, so you just get one side in there, and then the other side just clips in, just like that. Slide the second drive into the front, and see how easy it is, or how hard it is, I've not actually tried this. See how it works when you want to add an extra drive into the storage array. So let's let that spin up, and we'll come back once it's detected. And there we go, the drive's now detected. So as you can see right now, it says repairing storage, and it's going to take about 14 hours to do that. Essentially what it's now doing is it's rebuilding the RAID array onto that extra drive here. So it'll take a long time to do that, but that's just the initial setup process. And once that's done, we'll have full redundant storage. As you can see, what it's now showing is 8 terabytes of available storage, 8 terabytes of storage protection. So these drives are now mirrored. So once this is all finished repairing the storage and rebuilding the array, if either of these drives fails, all the data stored, including all the Unify Protect footage, would still be safe on the other drive. And then you just need to swap in a new drive to replace a failed one. It would rebuild automatically, and you can go back to having full redundant storage. So yeah, really, really nice to finally see redundant storage on a UDM, rather than having to go all the way to Unify UNVR just to get RAID. You can now have RAID on a UDM Pro Max, which is really, really cool. Finally, let's take a look at the performance. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the performance of the UDM Pro Max and see how it compares to the published performance figures of the UDM Pro and UDM Pro SE. So first of all, we'll take a look at my, talk about my performance test setup because it's a little bit janky, so I'll just explain how that works and then we'll get on to performance. So here we have this, the test setup and I'm going to be using OpenSpeedTest. So OpenSpeedTest is a speed test server that's running on my server which is sitting off the side here. So this is a local speed test server running on my local network. And this server is capable of full 10 gig speeds. So if I run this connected directly to the server, I can easily pull full 10 gig speeds. So the speed test server will not be a limitation here. I've also swapped out the framework laptop for a MacBook because the framework was struggling to get 10 gig speeds on open speed test, so I've swapped out for this more powerful laptop that can definitely do it. Then to connect it all up, you'll notice UDM Pro Max isn't sitting here. It's actually sitting off camera. And the reason for that is, as you've seen, the UDM Pro Max has an SFP plus WAN port 
and an SFP Plus LAN port. But the only 10 gig network adapter I have that I can connect to my laptop has a 10 gig copper port. And I don't have any sort of media converters or SFP Plus to RG45 modules that would work for this. So instead what I've done is I've got the UDM Pro Max sitting off to the side plugged into my switch. The WAN port on the UDM Pro Max is plugged into a switch port that's assigned to my main LAN. So through that WAN port it can directly access, speed test, access the speed test server on the server. Then the LAN port on the UDM Pro Max is plugged into a different switch port which is on dedicated VLAN that's shared with one of the copper ports and it's that third copper port along that has that yellow cable coming out of it. With that VLAN, that switch is essentially just acting as a media converter, so it's essentially connecting that 10 gig LAN port on the UDM Pro Max directly into the laptop's network adapter, and the switch is really just sitting in the middle acting as a media converter. So on this network adapter here, we essentially plug directly into the LAN port on the UDM Pro Max. So what we can do is when we run speed test through Open Speed Test, we're going to be pulling that traffic through the UDM Pro from the WAN side to the LAN side, and we'll get the full WAN to LAN performance of the UDM Pro Max. You'll also notice here that I've popped the hard drives out. That's just because the hard drives are still trying to rebuild that RAID array from the previous demonstration. So I've pulled them out just so it's not sitting there trying to rebuild a RAID array, just because that would impact the CPU performance for these tests. So I've popped the drives out just so we get the full unaffected CPU performance. So let's check it out. So for the initial test, we can see we have IDS and IPS turned off. So regular device identification and traffic identification is turned on in the UDM, but suspicious activity, which is the IDS and IPS functionality, is turned off. So this has got to get, get a sort of baseline performance test for the full speed that we can get through this device. So let's run the test and see what we get. So start that, see what happens. And as you can see, we're getting well over nine gigabit a second. So we're basically maxing out the connection. That is very, very good. And then upload, we're kind of getting, yeah, around about the same. We're getting very close to 10 gigabit. Now we can't really find performance test figures for the regular UDM Pro and UDM Pro SE for just basic firewall performance without IDS and IPS. But with this, we're fully, we're almost saturating a 10 gigabit connection. So that's really, really good to see. So yep, without IDS and IPS enabled, just acting as a standard firewall with the sort of traffic identification functionality enabled, you can almost saturate a 10 gigabit connection. So that's really, really good. But now let's go for the harder test where we're gonna turn on suspicious activity which is the IDS and IPS functionality, so that's all turned on there, with kind of sort of default settings there. And then, now let's see what happens, we run a speed test with IDS and IPS enabled. So we'll refresh that, run the test, and see what we get. So it's been a few minutes, I've given it enough time for the IDS and IPS to fully enable and get up and running, so let's test it out. And the number to beat with this is three and a half gigabit, because the UDM Pro and UDM Pro SE are rated for a maximum of three and a half gigabit of IDS and IPS throughput. So let's see if we can beat that with the UDM Pro Max. So let's run the test. So let's start that. And we're straight away beating it. So we're now 4.5 gig, 4.6 gig, 4.7 gig, 4.8, 4.9. Yep, we're getting almost 5 gigabit of IDS and IPS throughput. And there we've beaten 5 gigabit briefly. So yep, we are fairly easily able to get almost 5 gigabit of IDS and IPS throughput through the UDM Pro Max. So that has definitely beaten out the other UDMs. And that just shows that this does have a much more powerful CPU that does definitely translate to better IDS and IPS performance. So yeah, that's pretty clear there. Definitely more powerful than the other UDMs. So there you go. That's a look at the brand new Unified Dream Machine Pro Max. And it seems like a really nice device. Now, of course, this doesn't replace the regular UDM Pro. If you just need a standard UDM Pro and you don't need the high speed performance of this or the redundant hard drives, the UDM Pro is still a perfectly viable device. But if you're working on a larger deployment where you maybe need that additional IDS and IPS throughput, or potentially you're just worried about running a lot of Unify applications on this and you just want that additional CPU power and memory, or you're in an environment where you don't want to have to fork out for a dedicated UNVR, but you do want redundant hard drives for Unify Protect, this is an absolutely brilliant option. So yeah, hope you found this video interesting. And stay tuned for future videos I'll be doing on these where we take a look at additional features in more depth. But all's left to say now is thank you very much for watching.